Let's now implement the get arithmetic sequence method. So now you can see that the return type is an array of integers. That means internally in the methods, we're going to create a new array of certain size, and then we're going to return the array as output. Okay, so now we're going to return the first n elements in the arithmetic sequence. You can see n over here is one of the inputs, whose start turn is the start. So start is a start turn, and also the common difference is diff. Okay, let's see some example to get an idea. So now let's say, so now you can see that I deliberately choose the same arithmetic sequence because we know that in all the three method calls over here, the start turn is four, which means we have some arithmetic sequence starting at four. And then a common difference is three. Okay, over here, three is a common difference. Okay, and then now the, uh, now the different inputs over here is about how many elements uh, do we want to retrieve from the first uh, uh, from the beginning? So now in the first case, we want to retrieve the first. Uh, we want to retrieve nothing there. So this is a special case, which means uh, just retrieve nothing, which would be empty array. Or we'll retrieve just one element, which would be an array of size one, and also retrieve an array of size five. Let's say conceptually, that's how you can think of it. So now, if you have an arithmetic sequence with starting term four. So four, and then the common difference is three. That means every of uh, to calculate the next term, it will be the previous term plus the common difference. So seven, and then ten, and then thirteen, and then seventeen. Oh, not seventeen. Sixteen. Sixteen, nineteen, and then etc. I uh, conceptually this uh, sequence can be just infinite. So now, depending on how large the third input over here is, the, that would determine the size of the array that we want to return. So now in the very first case, we simply say uh, over here, zero. That means nothing uh, well, nothing to be collected. So it would just be empty array. So empty array, I'll just say empty array like this. Okay, just empty, nothing to be retrieved. And then what about the second case? In the second case, we actually got uh, of size one. That means only retrieve an array that contains the first elements. Okay, that's uh, what's going to return. And then also for the third case, we're going to retrieve an array of size five that contains the first five elements. So that's, that's going to contain four, seven, 10, 13, and 16. Okay, so now you can see that uh, over here, more precisely, this is going to return just empty array, not now array. Okay, empty array. Okay, it's really important, not now. Okay, as we explained in the very first tutorial video about the basic syntax and concept, now array and empty array, they're completely different stuff. Okay, now in, the, uh, in this case over here, we're gonna return an array of size one of index zero, and then it was gonna contain just four. Okay, in the, uh, in the third case, we're gonna return an array containing the first five elements of size five, so zero, one, two, three, four. And then it's gonna contain the first starting item for seven, 10, 13, and 16, the first five elements. So now here is how the method is going to work conceptually, okay? So now we can deal with empty array as a special case to say if n happens to be zero, that means we just return empty array. Otherwise, the return array should be of size at least one. When it is at least one, that means we should really at least fill in the start item to begin with. Okay, so you can see the start item is over here. So four here and four here. St filled, uh, filled in four already. And then what you can do is you can now say the rest of the array is going to be, uh, let me choose this one here. The rest of the array over here is going to be filled in by a loop starting from index one, because we already handled index zero being the start item, starting from index one until n minus one, right? You can see n over here is the size of the array, minus one will give you the last index, okay? That'll be from one until n minus one. And then zero here is only the start. Okay, when we do the loop, how do we do it? You can imagine that, let's say if the loop counter i starts from over here, Okay, how do we calculate this particular uh, element over here? How do we calculate seven? It will be simply uh, be i minus one position 
the element that's stored in over here, which is four plus three, the common difference over here, right? And then similarly, when we go to the second iteration, we will move i to the right by one position over here. And then what's i minus one? Item i minus one is now to the left over here. So now how do we calculate this element over here? That would be the element at position i minus one, which we, which we computed in the first iteration, which is seven. Seven plus three will give us 10. Okay, we'll just continue going on like this, okay? So that's kind of the idea. Okay, let's program this in Java, okay? So it's really a very uh, recommended practice for you. Rather than going to do the coding directly, you want to figure out the ideas conceptually and then translate it into Java, okay? Okay, let's now go to your get arithmetic sequence over here. So what we will do is, first of all, we know that the size of the array that we want to return depends on how many elements we want to retrieve to make it the array, right? So now it depends on n. So integer, array, let's say call that sequence, is assigned to new integer array of size n, okay? So depending on what n is. So now in the first case over here, if n is zero, then we'll create an array of empty size. If n is five, for example, and then n will be five. So create a, creating an array of size five accordingly, okay? So now we want to say, now we will only go into the loop uh, to actually figure out exactly like the green part over here, right? Like the green part over here. We only go into certain loops and also fill in the star item over here when the array, uh, when n is actually strictly larger than zero, which means we want to retrieve something, okay? So now let's go back to our Android Studio over here. Let's say this. I would say if n is strictly larger than zero, that means we do want to retrieve something. Otherwise, we bypass the body of the if statements and then simply return whatever uh, sequence it is, okay? Now, in the case where n is simply equal to zero, what's gonna happen? When n is equal to zero, we initialize an empty array over here, and then uh, n larger than zero is false. Zero larger than zero is false. So we'll simply return the empty array we just created. If n is strictly larger than zero, that means we got at least one element. That means we can fill in the star item at least. Integer uh, array sequence. Oh, actually we got that already, sorry. So we can say sequence at position zero is exactly equal to start. And now I'm gonna run a loop. And as I said before, the loop is gonna run uh, starting from index one because we, we already just handle index zero, okay? So now for integer i is assigned to one, uh, initialized to one, i less than n, and then i plus plus. And then we'll say, what's gonna be the contents for sequence i? For example, what's gonna be the item for sequence one? It's gonna be sequence zero plus the common difference, right? What's gonna be the uh, value for sequence two? Sequence two is gonna be whatever sequence one is plus the common difference, right? And etc. It's gonna be sequence i minus one, Okay, plus the common difference. Okay, let me make some comments for you. Okay, uh, what I would do is, uh, okay, if n is equal to zero, then we bypass the body of if statements, returning an empty array. Okay, now another special case for you. What about n is exactly just one, just one? pretty much like this case over here. N is exactly one. What's gonna happen? If N is equal to one, one larger than zero is true. That means we're gonna set the sequence zero to be star, pretty much like we set the sequence zero to be four over here, okay? And now, are we going to execute the body of the loop? We are actually not because, think it this way. If N happens to be one, and now I starting from one, so one less than one would be false. That means we don't even go into the loop for the very first time. That means we bypass the body of the loop, okay? What we'll do is, if n is exactly equal to one, then we bypass the body of loop, in which case returning an array of size one with sequence zero equals equals the star. Okay, you should really try to see uh, these uh, special cases to see different uh, execution flow it might be depending on the input values. 
Okay, that's about it. And now, let's now run a test here to make sure it works. Okay, it's a very simple method, but given that you understand this, uh, it's not so difficult to program. Okay, let's now just execute the uh, test here and see what we got. Okay, so now we got uh, get arithmetic sequence over here. Okay, so that's what we have over here. Let's go to utilities tester. Get arithmetic sequence. Okay, so let's see one by one. Now the, for the first one, uh, three and two and zero. So that should be empty array over here. For the second one over here, three and two. And then just the first element. So that'll be the start item, three. Okay, and then three and two. And then we get the first five elements over here. So we got three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Looks right. And then similarly, I also put a case where the common difference can be just minus. Okay, you will see that it also works. Again, whenever you got M being zero, that means empty array. Be careful, not null array. Okay, so which means if you simply just do things like, uh, for example, if you say simply say uh, rather than new integer n, you simply say uh, null. For example, you're gonna run into trouble. So that's this is really the uh, neatest way to do it.